I was asked by ISA to provide an update of my talk on Industry 4.0 that I did for the S4 Europe conference in 2016. For some context, the talk can be found on YouTube if you enter the search term Brave New Industry 4.0. My argument was, five years ago, that first, Industry 4.0 is not an industrial revolution. Second, the technical concept of autonomous control that some associate with Industry 4.0 is anything but validated. And third, the growing digital complexity that Industry 4.0 introduces inevitably results in OT security risk that can only be countered with security automation. Let's check how each of these arguments looks like five years later. Is Industry 4.0 an industrial revolution? In 2016, I pointed out counter-arguments that show how Industry 4.0 is different from earlier industrial revolutions. I don't want to repeat those arguments here because it's not necessary. So far, we did not see an enthusiastic adoption of Industry 4.0 resulting in dramatic societal change. We didn't see a revolution. What we did see is gradual acceptance of low-cost sensors and cloud-based services in OT environments. And I believe that's noteworthy enough. Industry 4.0 has much more characteristics of slow but steady evolution rather than disruptive revolution. And I don't see how that would be a bad thing. Competitive terms such as the digital transition in OT capture this characteristic better than the attempt to associate with earlier industrial revolutions with their massive impact on a global scale. So my bottom line is, whether you call it an industrial revolution or not, Industry 4.0 is inevitably moving along. There won't be a way back to analog, unconnected control. And any objections against cloud connectivity and SaaS products will fall one after the other. That's not a bad thing, but it introduces new cybersecurity challenges that I'll address later. What about autonomous control? I don't know about you, but I haven't seen it in real production environments. So five years later, I think we can assume that autonomous control was probably just a hyped up concept, a marketing term introduced to spice up and mystify Industry 4.0. But why would you need such a mysterious concept if there are other more tangible benefits such as predictive maintenance, executed by vendors via a cloud service. Obviously, we went through a learning curve that showed some real-world benefits of more digital connectivity, particularly if that connectivity extends into the cloud. And as usual, those benefits, some with tangible dollar incentives, introduced new cyber risks that need to be weighed against the gains. This gets us to my third argument from 2016, which is that the rising scale of digitalization that comes with Industry 4.0, along with growing digital complexity, introduces the necessity for security automation. It's not the fact that remote access has become a new normal or that industrial applications are moved to the cloud that causes challenges to cybersecurity. It's pure scale. It's the magnitude of the problem that has pushed OT security beyond what mortals are able to accomplish within reasonable timeframes. In this regard, concerns about a shortage of OT security skills are misguided. Even if we had double or triple the OT security talent available, it would still not be enough. The best example for this is vulnerability management. For an i4.0 friendly digital production environment of any decent size, vulnerability management is no longer possible with automation, period. Let me rephrase. 
if you don't have a solution or platform for automated vulnerability management, the idea that you have any clue about your cyber risk is delusional. Let me give you a brief overview on how you determine which known vulnerabilities affect your installed base. For any vulnerability, there is a specification of which products and product versions are affected. That specification may contain ranges and dependencies. For example, a specific vulnerability may only affect a given hardware product, such as a particular PLC, in version X, with firmware version Y to version Z. In this simple example of CVE 2020-6990, a vulnerability affects two particular types of Rockbell PLCs with different firmware generations. In one case, limited up to a specific firmware version number. Also affected is the engineering software for the PLCs, also limited up to a specific version number. Think about it for a second that it would be your responsibility to reliably check if this vulnerability, as just one of the thousands of other vulnerabilities, affects your installed base. How much time would you need to check just this one CVE? To make matters worse, vulnerability definitions do undergo change as the analysis of a given vulnerability progresses. In other words, you cannot bet that the vulnerability assignment you made yesterday will be valid tomorrow. It must be re-evaluated any time a change is published. As a matter of fact, vulnerabilities must be re-evaluated every day because new vulns are published, old ones are changed, and new hardware and software is installed on the factory floor. Let's do an honest reality check. For a mid-size manufacturing operation with 50,000 devices scattered across multiple sites, you will have to perform several hundred billions of logical operations to match your installed base against the repository of known vulnerabilities, which presently lists around 170,000 known vulnerabilities. Hundreds of billions of computations. I'm not making this up. How do I know? Because the software product that we sell does just that, among other things, so we can simply count the involved computations. That means there is no way to do meaningful vulnerability management without automation, not even if you would run a gigantic sweatshop task with nothing else. As I said earlier, even if we had three or ten times the security talent that we presently have, it would still not be enough. In today's OT environments, you either automate security tasks at scale or you're doing security theater. And security theater is what we see a lot these days. Take an organization which thinks anecdotally patching their devices for the latest vulnerability that made the headlines will keep them safe. My point is that OT security only has a chance to be even mildly successful if executed at scale. And that requires automation. This is the new reality and it's a side effect of Industry 4.0. And now prepare for a surprise. Different from five years ago, today this is actually feasible. Today we do have the technology and products to make it happen. And we do have new business models such as outsourced managed services that can run and process the analytics for organizations that cannot muster the effort internally. If there is anything rev revolutionary about Industry 4.0, it's probably the relationship of asset owners and external service providers that has changed. On-site visits become the exception and online connectivity becomes the norm. Continuous remote support replaces the project business. So here is my bottom line. OT security for complex Industry 4.0 installations has become a choice 
rather than something that cannot be obtained for fuzzy conceptual reasons. Industry 4.0 architectures and applications are not a cybersecurity risk per se, now that we have seen that the voodoo part of the topic, namely autonomous control, was nothing but a marketing gimmick. Therefore, I can leave you with some hope. Take advantage of the digital industrial evolution and make sure to establish cybersecurity automation early in the process.